Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Amma ba'da. Habita billah. I thought it would be important to offer advice to the du'at al-khayr. Dua to Ahlu Sunnati wal Jama'a in general, as the Dua to Ahlu Sunnah, in fact, when we look at it, when we look at them in light of the book in the Sunnah, that they are the Muslihun, they are those who rectify. They rectify societies. They rectify the da'wah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Their duty and job is to call people to the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To call people to Tawheedullah. And help people practice worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're there to help reform. And I was talking to one of my beloved today, and it was mentioning how certain brothers are speaking ill of me and ill of other du'at, or they classify you with this one or these groups or these guys. And I told them frankly, I said, we've been talking about this for years, meaning me and him personally. And then we have mentioned this in our da'wah. Who cares? Because you will never please the people. You will never please the people. If you say something, a group will be pleased, another group will be displeased. So your job is to call people to the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal. So first point I want to mention to the Du'at al-Khair is not to worry about the people. Have hikmah, have wisdom. Realize your mistakes if you have mistakes. But focus your energy on calling people to the book in the Sunnah. This is what we see from the Ulama Sunnah. This is what we see from the Madhab of the Salaf al the Ahimmat al Deen, they call to the book in the Sunnah. So that goes back to Ikhlas Lillah. That is going to be one of the most important things to carry you through in your da'wah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that you're sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You want to achieve the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal. And your intention is sahih, it's sound, it's correct. You want good for people. You want to correct yourself and you want to correct people. You want to leave good. That takes ikhlas lillah. It takes sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That will help you when people attack you. That will help you when people belittle you. That will help you when people warn against you. When people make tech fear of you or physical bodily harm comes to you, or the opposite, people don't listen to you, or people don't, they reject you. That's gonna come back to your ikhlas lillah. Likewise, when things don't go your way, maybe financially, maybe you find difficulty in various aspects of your life. It's gonna take sabr, patience. And that is related to ikhlas lillah. So perhaps the second piece of advice is to be patient. Sabr. Sabr ala adafi. 
meaning being patient at, at uh, patient with regards to the harms that come with Dawah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the rejection and the tibdir and the tafsir and the takfir and all of the other things or what seems to be an adam al meaning that it seems that no one's listening so that's going to cause you to reassess. Is it worth giving dawah? Should I do dawah? Maybe Allah doesn't want me to give dawah. Maybe I'm not ahlin for dawah. All of these things and doubts will come to you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best what is true and what is not. What's a doubt and what may be true. Maybe you're not cut out for dawah. But however, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has favored you with something, then you want to use that something for khayr. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala favored you to study something from his religion, then keep studying and keep sharing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you'll have success with that. No doubt, one way or another, there will be some success. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, he said, Now, the Prophet وسلم, said that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides one person by your hand, it's better for you than the red camels. And the red camels, a habit of Allah was from some of the most precious wealth to the Arabs. And still, many of the, in the Arab countries, the camel, and especially certain breeds and certain types of camel, are, you could pay millions, perhaps almost millions of dollars, or a million dollars. Definitely a million reals and three million reals, so that's almost a million dollars for one camel. So they are quite prized. So the Prophet ﷺ gave an example that the Sahaba would understand. And that was because of the value of the red camel was so high. He said that it's better for you if one person is guided. So it shows us the importance of Dawah al-Allah. And for the Talib al-Ilm, with Dawah al-Sunnah, it's important for them to continue, Mumarasa, to continue. And when we look at even our contemporary scholars, you see so many of them where they started or they had few students, but then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raises them up and look how much benefit we gain from them. Even if the masses are maybe not accepting it and being guided, but indirectly there's guidance you don't know how that effect of guidance is so it's very important for the day in a sunnah to be patient and have that sincerity as i mentioned <laughs> a third point of habit of Allah, and i think i'll end it here because there's so much advice and the scholars have mentioned so much But this is something I've noticed in being back here in the States. And that is a habit of Allah that the da'i al sunnah should be a da'i al sunnah. <coughs> Meaning that they're calling to the book of the sunnah. <coughs> and they're calling to the madhab of the salaf. That they're not compromising that. They're not distorting that. They're not destroying that. And for things in the dunya moving away from that call because ultimately your success is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one of our beloved mashayikh Imam Muqbil bin Hadi al-Wadi'i Allah yarhamuhu one of the muhaddithin of this time. He said in a very beautiful statement, 
He said, Dawah to Ahlul Sunnah, Dawah to Min Kitabi La Ila Kitabi La. Women Sunnati Rasulillahi Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Ala Alihi Wa Sallam. Illa Sunnati Rasulillahi Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Ala Alihi Wasallam. He said that the Dawah of Ahlul Sunnah, it's the Dawah from the Book of Allah to the Book of Allah and from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam to the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. That's our dawah. So for the da'i of sunnah, he needs to really be a da'i to sunnah. <coughs> not a da'i to bid'ah. Not to a defender of the people of bid'ah and, 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 and injustice and the people of dhulm. Because they could be dhulm, they could be dhalimim, they could be call us to shirk. And they could still have the name of Islam. Or they might even be Muslim, but they still call the shirk because of their jahil and their ta'wil and their bid'ah, fasida. But yet you have some people who studied in the places of sunnah, but they still sit comfy with them. And they still say, this is our brother, don't speak about these guys. I don't like so-and-so, he's too harsh because he keeps attacking so-and-so. So, ahabba to billah, it's very important that a da'il of sunnah calls to the sunnah, practices the sunnah, uh, exhibits the sunnah, and warns against misguidance and bid'ah. So those are just some small pieces of advice. I advise the du'a to sunnah in the West to take hold of not because I have a place in a position, but because it's doubt, it's it's uh, advice that basically we've gotten from the scholars of Ahlul Sunnah. So it's a reminder, Mimbaba <coughs> Tadkir. And we ask Allah Ta'ala, the Almighty, to forgive us of our many sins and shortcomings. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad. وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم